Now, welcome back to Tabby Cat in watercolour. Um, usually wet the whole sheet of paper for a soft impression in, in watercolour. But with this cat, um, I feel that uh, there's some areas you want to preserve dry. And so I've mixed up a couple of colours and a couple of brushes for each one for each colour. First one is a sort of greenish grey. Um, which is ochre and ultramarine um, and fairly strong I suppose, fairly strong and then uh, I want a sort of um, ochre pink or terracotta-ish not quite terracotta, sort of ochre with crimson mixture so that's ochre with crimson it's got a little bit of ultramarine and that's ochre with ultramarine I want those two colours to try and um, use them uh, into wet and so I've got two brushes and I've got a clean brush for wetting so I'm going to wet this area uh, it was meant to be a clean brush but it wasn't Let's take that off so I'm going to wet this area and preserve the white of the the cat's nose so I'm going to wet around here still a dirty brush and then float some colour into that. So I had some grey, which was ultramarine and yellow ochre. Let's see if I can try that on here. Obviously the, the whiskers are protected. So it's, in order for this colour to disperse a little bit, I need it to be um, quite strong. So this is this is interesting here. This is a, a sort of furry edge along the chin. So I'm going to try and work the brush back up to that, and then take a damp brush and just let that colour run away from there a bit. Just wet this area here so that I lose the edge. So really what I'm trying to do is control edges. So I've got a sharp edge against the chin here. So I'm using the brush upright, trying to make that slightly furry looking along that edge. And then I, I'm hoping that granulation will contribute to the um, illusion of the texture of fur. And these colors granulate well, particularly the ultramarine. Just damp that a bit more up to here. I'm going to vary the balance a little bit between the ochre and the ultramarine because that the the cat has got the cover. The fur isn't all one colour. So against this neck here, against the neck again, that's a furry edge. So you want that to be soft, or I'm rather the, the texture of fur against that edge and then this still slightly blotchy look to the the fur as it's um, quite thick and has isn't brushed it's gone into shiny bits and dark bits <coughs> so that's a slightly more ochre <coughs> excuse me color and to go back to the grey. So you can see that I'm hoping that's granulating a bit there. You can see it on screen. Best not to revisit that. Let's leave a gap here and look at the shoulder. So that's, I mean, there are stripes obviously, and I'm going to still can see the stripes in the markings in the drawing. Um, but that's, I'm going to try that second stage for the stripes. So there's a sort of darker colour along here. Let's try and damp that a little bit, darker bits, and just leave, there's a sort of silvery grey, which is um, this colour as it dilutes or as it diffuses, and that's along the back here, and I would just let that go beyond the edge of the, the drawing, let it blur outwards. So you just let, the, let, it, let it drift a little bit. 
that come in here because the belly is a different colour. Let's just dump this down with the hake so that causes the paper to buckle a little bit. Still on this uh, 425 GSM 200 pound Buckingford knot surface. There's silvery stripes kind of silvery look to the fur, but not there. And then the tail, that can be a little out of focus as well. So the tail is just allow that to blur a little bit. So along that edge it's quite grey. Quite grey there. I had mixed up a fair amount of this colour and I'm just mixing slightly different batches of it so that it's not all the same. Some have got more ochre and less ultramarine, the others have got more ultramarine and less ochre. Pause, a bit darker on the pause. Let's try and catch that edge. Try and catch that edge. Let's just let that drift, drift away, I think. Yeah. Silvery grey on the pores, silvery grey, and granulating. So I'm hoping that I'm going to let that dry, uh, really let it dry. So this is still um, damp here. I'm switching to the other colour I've made, which is a ochre and crimson mixture. An ochre and crimson mixture, and just let that um, mingle, but not brush into, so I'm trying to let the water that's still on the paper surface uh, disperse the colour. So not too much brushing, no over brushing. You know what will happen if we start brushing that around too much. It'll um, go muddy. All the colour will go muddy. So there's a little bit of this warm colour on the leg of this cat. There's a little more warm colour there. And um, little patches of it. There's a patch of it on the tail there. This ultramarine is separating very nicely. So there's another patch of this warm colour on the leg here. And some to some degree there's some of it here too. Right, so I want that to just blur out a little bit, flare out and lose that edge. In the, f in the head there's a mixture of colour, the head's a bit more involved and we'll have, ultimately have more detail. So there's a white nose which I'd like to try not to paint, but um, the ear, for example this bit of ear, in fact just the inside of the ear I'd like to leave light, but this outside of the ear and the back of the head might uh, make a sort of grey. Just let that run off a little bit there. So the inner part of the ear is a lot lighter, so I'm going to try and protect that. And the back of the head also, that's darker. Just wet this edge. And the back of the ear again, this other ear, that's got, it's quite a furry place, the ear, so I'll try and just blur that edge again, stop that from forming a hard line. Let's blur this edge. So I'm trying to protect the inner part of the ear, which is uh, relatively light. So we've got darker grey coming through here and then furry, sort of furry texture there. And then I'm going to wet just dump this down a bit more. So I'll try and protect the detail of the eyes, the cat's eyes. Um, let's use a little brush to wet, a smaller brush. So coming down the bridge of the nose, that's a different colour. I'm trying to leave out the eyes. And the the nose is has got some of this colour on it. 
My actual nose is rather pink, but I can paint that later when this is dried. So that colour just sort of disappears into this uh, lighter or wet area. Got a little bit of colour around there, possibly. Clean brush. Let's go for the clean brush. And put down a mixture of the two, I think, here. A little bit of both colours mixed together. The ochre, uh, warm ochre and the blue-grey. And just let that um, edge go, a sort of furry edge, along the edge of the ear. Let's see if I can make that colour again. It's a little bit more just a sort of eyebrow there. And then this, oops, this other colour. I can't, I can't replicate too precisely this because it's this is um, a watercolour impression. Uh, it's meant to be a loose impression and not, not super detailed. So if I come in with a This edge and the eye. Just going to wet this again. Just wet that edge. Not too wet because I got the danger of a back run forming. So the nose is is um, trying to not, not to paint the nose because that's definitely uh, white. There's a sort of light area around the rim of the eye. Go cautiously there. See, with watercolour, I'm trying to preserve the opportunity of making this uh, darker later, or keeping it light so that, so that that is a possibility, rather than painting all these dark details in at this stage. So that I'm trying to, I suppose, make a, a soft impression of uh, all the lighter aspects of the fur, which can then be. Uh, built up a little bit more in other stages. Uh, later stages, when this is dried, this is too many things to do in watercolour when, when um, trying to look at all this detail. Try and paint that under there. And that's a sort of another furry edge and the twists of fur around the um, neck. So I think that's enough. Uh, for the first step, might work on the ears a little bit. But let that dry slowly and uh, come back to it when it's 100% dry and work into the stripes in part three.